Hi and welcome back to a new video. Today we can talk about the RTX 4070 Super. I'm pretty sure you already know the specs which were released on the 8th of January and today we can finally talk about performance. Just a quick summary, the 4070 Super is pretty similar to the 4070. It has the same amount of memory, 12 GB, and the same bus width of 192 bit. But it has a slightly stronger GPU, for example with 7168 CUDA cores. And that, at least on paper, allows the 4070 Super to be about 20% faster, which becomes very interesting at the point when I looked at the pricing. So the 4070 Super is priced at the same MSRP where previously we had the normal 4070. And the normal 4070 dropped in MSRP by about $50. So that brings us a card with roughly the same pricing as before, but in theory with 20% more performance. And if that translates to actual performance in real world, that's what we want to find out in today's video. To get a first impression of the performance, we will first look into 3D times by Extreme GT1, which is a 4K benchmark. And the 4070 Super performs with about 64 FPS on average. That is an increase over the 4070 by 19%. So that is pretty much what we expected in theory. And with this, the 4070 Super is about twice as fast as an RTX 2080. I also want to point out quickly that I did this review under a lot of time pressure because today for me it's the 5th of January. Yesterday I pretty much received the card and the driver so I had one day of testing and tomorrow I have to fly to CES in Las Vegas for more videos and coverage. And after that I won't have time to work on the video. So I tried my best to get as much information out of the card as possible but it's maybe not as detailed as I wish. This was the normal RTX 4070 Founders Edition. If you would ask me, I already liked this design. It's just very simple and elegant, but it changed a little bit for the Supercard. The RTX 4070 Super and probably all of the Supercards are just pure black. That's something new and something I like. I think they could have played around with the Super logo a little bit to make it stand out. But apart from that, yeah, I think the design is a success. It looks good to me. I also want to point out that currently the card is running under full load. As you can see it consumes about 190 watt and there's still about 17 to 15 watt coming from the PCI Express slot. So yeah, it's just above 200 watt in power draw right now. But what I want to show with this is that the card running at full load and I'm standing about 50 centimeters away is pretty quiet. Similar as the previous Founders Edition. So I think the design is very well made. Not a lot of coil wine and pretty quiet. Taking a look into Assassin's Creed Valhalla with 1080p resolution and max details. In this game I could observe the 4070 Super beating the normal 4070 by about 10%. As usual you can also see the power consumption in all the charts with the blue bar. And you can see the 4070 Super consuming about 161 watt, which is just slightly higher than the 4070. The 4070 Super consumes about the same as the RTX 3060, but it performs twice as good, which again just confirms how efficient the Nvidia ADA GPUs are. In Valorant, running 1440p resolution with eSports settings, I had to realize that my 4070 Super is running into the CPU limit of my 12900KS, which you can see by the small performance gain of only 6% and roughly the same power consumption as the 4070. I also realized when I checked the utilization of the card that it's just sitting somewhere between 90 and 95%, which is a clear indication that there is yeah, performance headroom left that you're not using. And at the same time I could see that the CPU was just running much higher than usual. But the card selection I picked for this video, like the 2060 or 2080 or also the 1060, is mainly so you can get a better impression of what kind of performance increase would you see if you would upgrade from one of those older cards to like a 4070 Super, because I don't see why I would compare this with like a 4090. This kind of 1440p behavior is the same that I could observe in Remnant. With about 200 FPS on average and 119 FPS in 1% low, that's pretty much the sweet spot running a very decent 1440p experience. And it's about 13% faster than a normal RTX 4070. Interestingly, the power consumption in this game for whatever reason is always very high and much higher than in any other test that I'm using in this benchmark run with about 212 watt. That is also why I like to benchmark this game. One interesting aspect is if you compare it with an RTX 2080. 
because the RTX 4070 Super is about twice as fast, but consumes 20% less power. That is actually a nice development. Before we're going to jump into more benchmarks with Cyberpunk and also DLSS, I want to take a quick look at idle power consumption and also temperatures. In idle, the 4070 and 4070 Super are pretty much identical, at least in my test. Just running Windows desktop idle, not doing anything, I had about 4 watt, which is definitely great. Looking at the temperatures, it was also pretty much the same. Both cards, 4070 and 4070 Super, have just below 70 degrees Celsius on the GPU and about 80 degrees Celsius on the hotspot. Obviously, this just depends on the fan speed of the card. As usual, disclaimer, when it comes to temperatures, you should normally not just compare two individual GPUs and just take this for granted, because there's always a tolerance variance within two individual GPUs. So if you buy a 4070 Super, could just be 5 degrees Celsius colder, warmer, there will be a slight variance also in power consumption, but I just want to give an indication of what my two individual samples are running at. These are the Cyberpunk benchmarks I was talking about, 1080p resolution and ultra settings. Again, 4070 Super is delivering. And even without DLSS or frame generation, you can definitely use the native rendering for 1440p resolution. I had a performance gain over the normal 4070 by 21% on average and 13% on 1% low. Compared to a GTX 1060, this is about five times as fast. One important thing before I forget about it, I always use native in-game scenes. Even if a game like Cyberpunk has a built-in benchmark, I'm not using this, but I'm just running real in-game scenes, my own scenes. That's also why my data, my results may not be comparable with other results. This chart may be a little bit messy first look, but I just wanted to test everything that is possible when it comes to different kind of configurations. You will find native rendering, but also DLSS and performance, and also if possible with frame generation. I'm personally, in my personal rig, running DLSS on my older RTX Titan, so I think it is useful to have this kind of information. For example, right here, if we would run the RTX 2080 with DLSS, it would lift up the performance about to an RTX 4070 non-super with native rendering. However, if we look at the RTX 4070 Super with DLSS and frame generation, we are getting almost to 300 FPS. So if you like to use those features, that would definitely be the point to switch at least to 1440p resolutions. If you would like to dig deeper into this chart, just pause at this point and look at the data. Overall, I would say this step should have been done already with the RTX 4070, because when the card came out, it was definitely performing well. It's a well-performing card, but it was slightly too expensive. And that's something that Nvidia now adjusted. The RTX 4070 gets a little bit cheaper, and this card is performing, I think, pretty good for what it costs. Same price level, but at least according to my testing, I had something between 10 and 21% more performance, which I think is definitely a good step in the right direction and something I definitely appreciate. Overall, a good performing card, nice design, and what I'm looking forward to even more will be the RTX 4080 Super. I think just looking at the specs and the possible pricing, I think that could be even more interesting. All right, thanks for tuning in. See you next time. Bye-bye.